but I'm not ultimately blaming myself for not checking to see if my vitamin D supplement doesn't have any added sugar. I like to answer questions and comments that you get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Now I know who to blame for the pandemic. On a more serious note, great song. Thanks for demoing it. I noticed that you play a whole section of it with your pinky frozen on the fourth fret. Can you do a QA segment on what exactly you're doing there with the chord changes and why it works? I would love to. So the pandemic portion of this comment, I filmed a vlog slash whatever yesterday. Uh, that'll link to if you guys want to watch it because it has me and Davi going to the Schecter factory And I haven't done a video with Schecter since I predicted the pandemic. I talk more about that in in that video But anyways, yeah, I played a song and the song goes like this. It sounds like this This is basically the entire musical part So it's really just kind of like a static chord with moving bass notes. And I think this is like almost kind of like a secret weapon in songwriting that you hear. I'll do some other examples too. Uh, I think let's talk about this in the key of B major first, and then we'll move it to C or G or something later, just to kind of show how this has been used all throughout history. This is definitely not something that I came up with. But here we go. This is all based around a B major chord, okay? And if you've ever shied away from B major chords, stop it, because it's actually a lot easier than you think, because it's just an A major two frets higher, right? Fourth fret on the D, G, and B string. So what's going on here is we have a B major chord. And again, I'm borrowing with my pinky, which might not be the easiest thing for you to do, but you know, you can use any finger that you want. And then to kind of get a little bit of movement, but keeping it together, we're changing the bass note using notes in the scale like follows, right? So B, A sharp, fourth fret on the E string, second fret on the E string, fourth fret, second fret, E. Okay, and then it ends on one of my favorite chords ever, which this is a B over E. Some people call this like a B add four, something like that, whatever, but just listen to that. Ah, oh, so much, so much just beautiful tension in that chord. Now, what I wanna talk about is how you can use the notes in a scale over one single note. This is gonna be in the key of B. So this right here is our Mac Daddy note, key chord, all right? B major. Now, if we go through the notes of the B major scale, we do it on one string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one again. Those are the notes, but we're moving away from that chord. So what I think is a really interesting exercise to try, I'm gonna do some other keys, like I said, to make it easier in a second, but it's to go the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So essentially we're playing the scale in order still, but we're going down an octave in the middle of it, okay? We're so used to playing scales in, you know, just a regular ascending or descending order, but actually breaking it up in the middle, I think is something that's really helpful for your brain. And it kind of helps you make cool chord progressions, right? So we've got B, C sharp, D sharp, two, four, six. And then instead of continuing on to the seventh fret on the A string, which is E, let's go two, four, six, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. Okay, so here is our scale. All right, and just by playing it like that, it's sort of like, oh, that's kind of different. It almost sounds more musical, even though it's literally just the major scale broken up and kind of just reverting an octave down in the middle of the scale, okay? Mind-blowing technique. So now what we can do is like, all right, I want to make my way from this B major chord to this really pretty, you know, suspended sounding chord, even though it's not technically what it is. So I'm going to start using a descending bass line at first, B, A sharp, G sharp, F sharp, then back to G sharp, F sharp, E. And again, I think that has maybe a, a more interesting sound than just going through the chord scale, like the, the one chord, to the seven chord, to the six chord, to the five chord, to the six chord, to the five chord, to the four chord, which is essentially following, tracking those same root notes, okay? So don't be afraid to like experiment with things over a chord because when you, once you start doing that, you're getting these cool 
different chords. And again, I can come up with different names for all these chords, right? Like this is B major, this is a B major seven inversion. You could look at it that way. This is a G sharp minor seven, you know, so on and so forth. But it, it has a distinctly different sound because I'm doing it all under, essentially, the same one chord, all right? Now we can do the same thing in a little bit of an easier way by using a C major chord. Okay, this will sound like a million songs. You probably have to, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna descend through the C major scale, keeping this C major chord on top just by moving the bass note down, right? So C, B, A, G, F, E, F, G. I think like, off the top of my head, that sounds like Billy Joel, Piano Man, right? Or like even just taking a piece of that, like Fleetwood Mac, like Landslide. So again, these are some of like, I, I think the prettiest songwriting devices that you could use because you're getting a little bit of consistency, right? The ear is getting used to having that one chord or whatever chord you choose, but we're getting a bass line that is either descending, descending, moving around, you're getting movement. And essentially that's what's really beautiful about acoustic guitar. And that's why you'll hear this in a lot of acoustic guitar music because you're really taking the place of an entire band, right? Because you can do the rhythm, uh, you know, essentially with your right hand, you could do the bass with the bass note and then the melody with the actual top of the chord, right? And then eventually you just get like an awesome song. So I think this is like a great way that you could start incorporating it. We'll do one more key uh, just as an example of this. But as long as we're talking about songs, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is DistroKid. This is how you actually get your music and your songs online. I do a bunch of videos with Distro. They are the best service in the game for this type of thing. Seriously, if you don't believe me, just look up anybody else talking about it online because it is so inexpensive and you can upload an unlimited amount of songs. So what I mean by uploading songs is like, let's say you have something you want to share with the world. It doesn't have to be a song, you know? It could just be like a spoken word poem or something. And you want to put it on like Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon Music. DistroKid makes all that happen. There's an affiliate link in the description of this video that will actually give you a percentage off. And it's already super cheap for the year. Again, I remember I first used... One of their competitors, TuneCore, when I first started putting my music online, and it was the worst. It was actually the worst. It was so expensive. I'm so glad I don't have to do that. I've been a huge DistroKid fan for way longer than I've been working with them. So, uh, yeah, trust me. The best service you can get for this. Super easy to do. All you need is just, like, some artwork and the file, and they take care of pretty much everything else, and they get it up super fast. So if you do have anything you want to get online, definitely click that affiliate link in the description because DistroKid is the best in the game. So let's do this with uh, one more chord, one more key. Let's do the people's key, the key of G, right? So the interesting thing about this is our bass note here is already just on the third fret. So we could just go backwards, three, two, open. We've got G, F sharp, E, F sharp, G. Okay, so it's like, all right, we're kind of like, we're already done at E, but what we can do is we can start going across the strings, just do the entire scale essentially starting on E. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. Then we do another F sharp, and then we end up with the open G string. So I think one thing that's cool about this is like, all right, because we don't have maybe the same amount of lower notes as like when we were doing B, where we have eight, seven, six, five, four. Let's take it from this G right here, and then maybe just get like the third fret on the B and the E string. So let's just do this, where this is our chord. And then let's start adding notes from that chord scale, essentially, right? And now all I'm doing is just switching that root note. G, D, B, F sharp, G, E. And see how like, sounds like, it sounds way more like a song already. Just by taking that one little chord 
then maybe I can start switching other notes along with it, right? So I think that's just like something that you should always be thinking about because really it, I don't know, there's just something about taking a static chord and then having some movement that I think is very inspiring just as a singer songwriter to kind of like experiment with. And all it really is, is just the major scale in one chord. So you might as well combine them and then just start making some music. Yeah, open tunings are fine and even fun if you want to be Dwayne Allman, but as much as I love Skydog's musical styles, he's dead. <laughs> and there's about one in a billion chance I'm going to be as good as or better than him. The world already has one in Derek Trucks. Let's leave the open tunings to advanced students, okay? <laughs> So this is a salty comment about how I was saying, like, yeah, if you're a beginner and you wanted to switch something up, try an open, try an open tuning out. Uh, this guy's like, you know who tried open tunings? Dwayne Allman. Guess what happened to him, kids? He died. <laughs> so definitely, I'm so sorry that I was recommending beginners try open tunings because I didn't realize that it was the number one leading cause of death for all guitarists. So thank you to that salty comment for potentially sparing so many beginner guitarists their lives. This lesson has got to be a lot of wow moments for a lot of people. Well done, Sean. The tip about the 5 and 7 equaling 12 blew me away. Alright, so this is a concept that I talked about in a video about learning any song I posted a few days ago. I wanted to spend just a few more minutes talking about this concept of numbers equaling 12. Seems simple, right? 7 plus 5 is 12. How does that help you in music, right? Let's talk about an F major chord. And let's say I want to play something that's two frets lower, but I'm stuck, right? It's like, oh, I go to two frets. It's like I can go down two frets, or since I can't go down any lower, going down two frets is the same as going up 10 frets, okay? Because again, as long as your distance equals 12, it's the same thing. So let's say I want to go to another chord. I know it's like, I can't go to like, you know, D right here. I can't go E, E flat, E sharp, but I can add 10 to one, which gives me to 11. So it's like, all right, instead of going down to, I can go higher 10. And then if that's too high, I can also compensate by going down a string and back five, okay? So we've got two different numbers going on here, which is a lot. That's why I wanted to take just a minute here and just kind of explain the difference between adding your numbers up to 12, and then maybe moving down a string to find a different chord voicing just by making a difference of five. I know we've got two different numbers going here, but this does make a lot of sense once you start thinking about it, right? Like, let's say I wanna go, let's say I wanna go G to like, uh, you know, a, a relative minor, E minor. I could go down three frets, or what can I do? Three, what's the difference between that? It's nine. 3 plus 9 is 12. So instead of going down to here, I can go all the way up to 12. Or, minor. <laughs> or, I can go 12 minus 5, which is 7. So that's going to give me the exact same chord. I don't know why I keep playing major here. But yeah, anyways. So make sure, if you're looking for a different place to play the same chord, remember that as long as one way and another way equals 12, you'll find the right spot. And then if you want to take a different string to root that on, then you just go five back and you're good to go. All right, for listening homework today, I'm going to throw you to some cool, uh, some cool alt rock stuff. Dodie, she's been at it a long time. I think her latest stuff is definitely by far my favorite. Really cool production vibe going on. So I'm going to link you to that. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. Also, I'm doing a Patreon lesson on that specific song that I was talking about earlier, just talking about actually how to play the song. So check out the Patreon if you guys are interested in that and I will talk to you all soon.